Okay, in today's video, we are going to be going over everything you wanted to know about carbon-14 dating, radiometric dating, carbon-14 dating. Where does that carbon-14 come from? And how do we use it to determine the age of something through carbon-14 dating? Now, before we do that, please don't forget down there in the bottom right-hand corner, click on that little red button down there, that little red icon down there, subscribe to my channel. Help me get to 100,000 subscribers. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. And while you're at it, why don't you leave me a nice comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought or you think of the video. Okay, so this is where the carbon-14, this is where the story begins. I like to think of this as a story. The story starts in Earth's upper atmosphere. In Earth's upper atmosphere, there are cosmic rays coming into the atmosphere. Where do those cosmic rays come from? Those cosmic rays come from outside the Earth's atmosphere, from places like the solar wind, from exploding stars that are ejecting material into the universe, and eventually some of that will meet the atoms that are in Earth's upper atmosphere. Now the cosmic rays, I put an arrow here to kind of designate the cosmic rays. They're not really rays like light rays. It sounds like it because it says cosmic rays, but what they really are, they are particles, high energy particles such as protons, neutrons, and other atomic nuclei. And they will come into Earth's upper atmosphere, and they will collide with other atoms. And when they do that, they can release other particles, one of which would, could be a high-energy neutron. Now, why is it high energy? Just because it's moving very quickly through that collision due to that collision. That's the symbol for a neutron. N for neutron, one mass number, and zero for the charge. Okay? So what happens to that high-energy neutron? Well, the high-energy neutron is then going to collide with a nitrogen-14 atom in the upper atmosphere. And when that neutron gets together with that nitrogen-14, it can be absorbed into the nucleus and taken into the nucleus, and then it's going to turn into, it's going to produce a carbon-14 atom and a proton. And this, for carbon-14 dating, this is the carbon-14 that we're interested in, or this is the product that we're really interested in, because that is radioactive, and it will decay through beta minus decay back to nitrogen-14, and we can use that idea of the decaying and the radioactivity of carbon-14 to date material, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Now, the carbon-14 is in the upper atmosphere, and it is going to combine with oxygen to produce what I'm going to call, or what we call, we can call, radioactive carbon dioxide. It's called radioactive because it's it's the component of the carbon dioxide that is made with carbon-14, which is radioactive. Don't forget there are three naturally occurring isotopes of carbon, carbon-12 and carbon-13, which are stable, and then carbon-14, which is radioactive. So that carbon dioxide is then going to be blown around and evenly distributed in Earth's atmosphere. So the idea is that the concentration of carbon-14, carbon-14 carbon dioxide, in Earth's atmosphere is the same everywhere in Earth's atmosphere. Okay, that's an important point. Anywhere you go in the atmosphere, the concentration of carbon-14 is the same. Okay, now the question becomes, what happens to that carbon-14, that radioactive carbon dioxide that is being produced in the upper atmosphere? And one thing that can happen to it is that plants can absorb that carbon-14 during photosynthesis. So here's the carbon-14 that's in the atmosphere the carbon-14 carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere it is breathed in by the plants. There's a tree, there's a leaf, there's an apple, and there's a carrot. And they're getting their carbon-14 from the atmosphere. That means that the concentration of carbon-14 in the plants is the same as the carbon-14 in the atmosphere. Now, the people are therefore going to start eating the plants. Okay, and they're going to be getting their carbon-14 from the plants also, which got it from the atmosphere. So here's the plants, here's the animals, people are one kind of animal, so here's three animals, and here's a people, and they're going to be getting their carbon-14 from the plants, and sometimes the animals will eat each other, so they'll get some of it from the other animals, but the animals get their carbon-14 from the plants, the plants get their carbon-14 from the atmosphere, and that means, because they're really all getting it from the same place, that means that the concentration 
of carbon-14 is the same in the atmosphere and it is the same in all living organisms. That's an important point because we can measure that so we know how much carbon-14 a plant or an animal has when it dies. Okay, so here's all the plants, here's all the animals, here's the carbon-14 that's in the atmosphere, and they all have the same concentration of carbon-14. Now, there are other isotopes of carbon, and they're also breathing in the carbon-12, the carbon-13, and the carbon-14 carbon dioxide, but we're most interested in the carbon-14 carbon dioxide because that is the component that's radioactive, that carbon-14. Now, sometimes you'll hear people talk about the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 or carbon-14 to carbon-12. That is going to be a constant, okay? The amount of carbon-14 in your body is a constant until you die. All right, now, you'll remember we said the carbon-14 is decaying, so you might think it's going down, but as it decays, you're also taking in more carbon-14 when the plants breathe in the CO2, or when the animals eat the plants. Okay, so there's kind of a balance between what's decaying and what's being renewed by taking in more carbon dioxide or more carbon-14. Now, unfortunately, at some point in time, all the plants and all the animals are going to die. And that means that they'll no longer be able to take up any more carbon-14. But the carbon-14 that they already have will continue to decay, but it will not be replaced by new carbon-14 because there you're dead. The plants are no longer breathing, you're no longer eating, and that means that the concentration of carbon-14 is going to decrease because carbon-14 will decay or is decaying through beta decay, beta minus, into nitrogen, and it gives off an electron and an anti-electron neutrino. But the important thing to remember is that carbon-14 decays through beta minus decay, and therefore you get a nitrogen-14, but the amount of carbon-14 is going to decrease after the animal or after the plant dies, because it's not going to be taking up any more new carbon-14. It's only going to be decaying the carbon-14 that it has already. Okay, and we can use this idea about what you originally had when you died, or what the plant or the animal had when it died, and what it had when it was found or discovered or measured at some point after, because it's going to be decreasing. And we're going to do that and do an example right now. So here is the pharaoh. If the pharaoh is alive, and he's alive like all the plants and the animals and the atmosphere, and therefore we know that in his body at time zero, okay, that's kind of at the beginning, that we've measured that in one gram of carbon, there are 5.02 times 10 to 10 carbon-14 atoms. So that's how many are present in all the plants and all the animals and all the people of which Pharaoh is a person. Now at some point, the Pharaoh is going to die. And then he's going to be mummified. And then at some point later, he's going to be found in a pyramid. And at some point, they're going to take a sample of him because they want to know when he died. They're going to take a sample of carbon from his body, and they're going to determine that originally he had 5.02 times 10 to 10. They measure it some time later. We don't know what that time is. He has 3.21 times 10 to 10 atoms of carbon per gram of carbon. It's less because the carbon-14 that he originally had is decaying. And we can use these two numbers and the half-life of carbon through this equation to determine how long he died. What is the time that exists between this initial time when he died and he had this much carbon to his found later and now he has this much carbon, which is less. This is the equation. N0 is the number of carbon atoms, radioactive nuclei, that were present at time zero, which we call when the person died. Time NT is how many he had at some time later. So we're going to solve this equation for this t right here. This is the time that exists between this and this. So it's nt equals n0 times e. e is Euler's number raised to the power of minus lambda. Now lambda in this case is the decay constant. And the decay constant is calculated as the natural log of 2 divided by the half-life. It's the half-life of carbon-14. The half-life of carbon-14 is 5,000. 730 years. So we can use that information and those two equations to calculate and solve for t. And we're going to do that right now. We can figure out how long ago the pharaoh died. 
Now, this is the decay constant. This is how we calculate the decay constant. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this term and I'm going to substitute it into this equation for lambda. And that gives us nt is equal to n0 times e. Now, e is therefore going to be raised to the power of minus the natural log of 2 times t divided by the half-life. Okay, and we're going to once again solve for this t. That's the t that exists between these two conditions, the time that exists. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to divide each side by n0. So I get nt divided by n0 is raised to, it equals e raised to the power of minus ln2 times t divided by the half-life. Now, I want to solve for this t again. And one thing I can do is I can take the natural log of both sides of this equation. If I take the natural log of the left side, I get the natural log of nt divided by n0. And if I take the natural log of e raised to any power, the natural log of e raised to a power is simply that power. So therefore, I'm kind of getting rid of the e. So I have that that is equal to minus ln2 times t divided by the half-life. We're going to solve for this t once again. And the next slide, I'm just going to start plugging those numbers in. So I get the natural log of 3.21 times 10 to 10 divided by um, 5.02 times 10 to 10. You've got to do this first inside these parentheses and then take the natural log. And then I'm going to plug the numbers in for the other side, and I'm going to get minus ln2 times t divided by the half-life which of carbon-14, which is 5,730 years. And then I'm going to solve for the t again. Now, what I did was I took this divided by this, and I think you get like something like 0.63. But when you take the natural log of that number, you get minus 0.4472. And then I'm going to take the ln2 divided by 5,000, uh, the natural log of 2 divided by 5,730. And you get that that is minus, don't forget your minus signs, 1.21 times 10 to the minus 10 years, the minus 1 years, the minus 1, because years on the bottom here, it's 1 over years, times t. I can divide both sides by this value with the negative sign. And you get that the time between when Pharaoh died and when he had this much carbon and when he was found later and had this much carbon-14 is 3,696 years, okay? So he died, if you consider you found him now, in the year 2019, which is when I'm making this video, that he died in the year, I'm going to subtract those two, 1677 BCE, before the Common Era, which is from 2019, 3,696 years years ago. Okay, so there you go. That's how the whole thing works out. That's where we get the carbon-14 from. That's how we use the carbon-14 for carbon-14 dating. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please don't forget, like I mentioned at the beginning, subscribe to my channel. Help me reach my goal of 100,000 videos. Uh, give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.